Hello, I'm Robin Worley, welcome to Lenscraft. Today, we're taking a closer look at On One Photo Raw, and I want to share with you some of my favorite filters that I use when I edit an image using On One. And I use these filters, at least one of them, or maybe all of them, on almost every image, so they're really important. Now, if you're not familiar with the On One Photo interface, I've got the Effects module open. And over on the left side, you've got sets of presets that you can apply, or you can apply filters from this as well. The other alternative is that you can add filters from over on this side. Now, at the moment, this is the base image. It's the image that I'd edited in the RAW converter, and I'm now going to adjust it using my filters. So the first filter I want to add, and it's one that I use, as I say, on virtually every image, is the Tone Enhancer. Now, once you've added the Tone Enhancer, you can pick from some of these predefined Tone Enhancer presets. Now, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to develop a tone enhancer adjustment just for this image. There's certain things that I know the tone enhancer does well, such as correcting the contrast and really making the clarity in the image jump out. Now there's a few really useful features in here. The first one I'll show you is this compression. Now if you've got a lot of shadows or a lot of highlights in your image, all you need to do is move the compression slider out and it will balance out those areas that are too dark or too bright. Now in this image, I'm actually okay with this. There's not too much that needs to happen in terms of compression. The next slider that I really like on this tone enhancer is this detail slider. And you can use this to really make the details pop in the image. So as I move that, you can see the detail in the rock and the foreground foliage and the heather all really intensify. And again, you can do even more by adding the clarity. Now, the only problem with the clarity is it tends to block up the darks in the image if you apply too much of it, so go sparingly on that. Now, once I've adjusted the compression and the details in the image to really emphasize the, the rock, I'll then tend to go up and apply some contrast if I need to, to the image generally and I may also reduce the exposure. Now, as you can see, that's made the image quite dark, so I'm going to go, rather than with the exposure, I will use the highlights just to darken the image down a little bit, and possibly the whites as well, but I'll open up the shadows as well. Whilst I've been doing that, you've probably seen the adjustments applying to the sky and to this ro these rocks. If I turn off that filter, so I just click there, you can see that that's added a nice bit of detail into this foreground rock and heather, but I don't like the effect it's having on the rest of the image. So I'm going to apply now a mask to help me selectively adjust this image. So I apply a mask and I'm going to invert that. And then I'm going to use the paintbrush to actually paint in the effect in the areas where I want it. Now, one of the secrets, I think, of applying adjustments to an image, especially a landscape image where nature's involved, is to try to keep the image adjustment real. And the way I do that is I try not to apply too aggressive an image adjustment. And I also try to apply it locally. I think that any sort of global adjustments are what you do during the raw conversion stage. In this image, I want to emphasize this rock here in the foreground and this rock as well and also this foliage here which is a lovely green color as well as the heathers now as i'm doing this you can see the detail is starting to really pop in the image now i've not got my paintbrush here set to paint with full opacity i've got it set at about 30 about 40 percent and I've got a soft edge to it with the feather. And that's allowing me to blend my adjustments quite naturally into the image. Now again, I like to keep things natural. And that means not going too far with the adjustment. But if I do go too far, again, I can adjust it by using the opacity slider on the filter that I've created. If you look at the adjustment mask now, you can see the white areas where I've been painting in, and that reveals the effect more strongly in those areas. Go back to the image, and you can see the adjustment. 
So if I turn it off and then turn it back on, you can see the adjustments there, but it's quite subtle. And that's what happens when you tend to paint an adjustment in rather than applying it globally. I'll also just add a little bit more detail to make that rock pop in the foreground because it's rather a nice texture. And then I'm just going to apply a very small amount of detail in the distance and down here into the foliage. But I'm not going into the far distance. I just want to keep the, the this sort of feeling of texture in the foreground because that's what's going to give my image this feeling of depth and detail. I'll also take a look at this mask again and I'm just going to feather it a little and that will help blend the details a little bit more. So I'll go back to the view of the image and just check it and now I'm happy with that. So that's my first adjustment and I tend to use the tone adjuster or tone enhancer on almost every image that I adjust in some way. The next filter that I'm going to talk about, which is my essential filter, is this color enhancer. Now the thing about this image is, it was shot about 10 minutes after the sun had set. So there's a lot of pinks and blues around. It is though a little bit light at the moment, and I'll address that later, you'll see why. But in this color enhancer, what I want to do is make sure that I've got the color balance quite right. So I may try warming up the image, and I don't like that very much, or I may cool it down just that little bit. So cooling it off with the color temperature looks quite nice. If I move to the, the tint to the left, it makes the rocks look as though there's no color in them. But if I move it just to the right slight bit, I add a bit more tint. And I'm just going to give the temp core temperature a little bit more warm. So I'm okay with how that's looking at the moment. Now down here, I can actually pick the individual colors. So the color of the heather is probably magenta and I can actually push that more towards being red. And I know I can also use the saturation on that as well. The orange is another color that's in this image that I want to enhance a little bit more. And I'm gonna move it more towards a yellowy color. And again, I'm gonna push up the saturation. I'm also going to widen the range at which it applies. So the range, if you think about it, it's trying to make something more precise in terms of the adjustment. Now, if I move it to the left, I'm not going to affect a wide range of oranges in the image. If I move it to the right, I affect more. I'm gonna do that. And that looks to be not too bad. So there's the original, there's the adjustment. Now I'm going to move over to the yellows and we'll move those to more towards a green color with the hue slider. If we just push the saturation very slightly and also just darken them very slightly. And what that's doing is it's targeting these greens here and also these greens in the foreground to make them more vibrant. So again, if I turn that off, you can see the standard look, if you like, or the unadjusted look. If I add it, turn it back on, you can see they've just become that touch more vibrant and more attractive in the image. Now, I'm still not completely sure about the adjustment here to the tint and the color temperature. Okay, so a little bit of a tweak needed, I think, but I'm okay with the way that's looking now. I can also use the vibrancy slider here to make an adjustment. At the moment, I'm more interested in targeting the ground than I am the sky. So if we look at that, that's the unadjusted, that's the adjusted. I'm happy with that. So now, again, I'm going to go back to my inverted mask and I'm going to paint the effect in on these areas that I really wanted to enhance. As I say, I prefer this method to working globally because I think it creates a more natural look and one that's more believable in the image. And 
I'm just applying some more touches to the heather that's in the more of a distant and I think I'll add in a touch of colour into the sky as well. So I'm just picking up the colour now in the clouds to enhance it. And again, the colour here on the right side of the image, where the sun was setting just over a little bit further to the right, just want to intensify that a little bit more. Okay, now the other colour that we haven't touched too much here is the blue. So if I can go back to the blue, I'm going to adjust that just to add a nicer tone into the sky. If I was working a little bit more slowly, had a bit more time, I'd probably use multiple colour enhancer layers to target different areas of the image, selectively using different masks. But as I'm working quite quickly here, I just want to show you some of the effects that you can get. So I can push the, the hue of the blue more over towards a purpley colour, and that will help enhance the image a little bit further. So again, there's the adjustment. The next filter that I use quite a lot is the glow filter. Now the nice thing about the glow filter is that you can use it to not just add a glow effect and softening effect, because sometimes all this detail can come a little bit harsh on the eyes. You can use it to actually darken the image slightly and intensify the color at the same time. So at the moment, the image is quite light and I'm not really worried about that. What I'm going to do is increase the amount of the glow. Now the halo basically says how much of a halo you add around the image, whereas the amount is the strength of the adjustment. You've also got these different blending modes where you can apply different effects, some light and some dark and some increased contrast. Soft light is an excellent one for adding that nice soft glow to an image where you've shot it after sunset. And the soft light strong gives even more of an effect, but it tends to give a more softening halo effect as well. So it can be a little bit strong where you want to retain details. So that gives a very sort of classic soft focus effect that was very popular back in the uh, 70s and 80s. I'm sure some of you watching this aren't old enough to remember that. If we go back to soft light though, that's the one I like. I think it gives quite a natural effect. Don't want to make it too strong. Again, nice halo there. That now looks good as a basis for the image. So if I turn it off, there was the original. You can see that's a significant effect. But what I'm going to do now is create a luminosity mask. This is a great tool in On One where you can just click the luminosity mask. And what you've got very quickly is this image. So in the mask, anything that's white is showing the effect, anything that's dark isn't. And we can use this now to control where we want the effect to be seen. So if I don't want it to be seen in the shadows, I can just darken down that mask and I can carry on removing it from the midtones or I can open it up and show it more in the midtones. And I can also intensify it in the, the light areas of the image. So let's go back to the view. And now you can see that the effect that's been added is much more subtle than it was before. So if I turn it off and turn it back on, you get the effect. It's actually created a lovely glowing intensity of light on the image. Now it may be too strong when we add another filter, but let's take a look and we'll add my fourth filter that I tend to use all the time on landscape images. And that's a vignette. And it's such a simple idea, but it's so effective. And the vignette I tend to use more often than not is this big softy. And that adds a dark vignette around the outside that's very large and we can adjust it further. Now, just to show you what's going on, I'm gonna move the feather slider down to zero. So you can see the vignette now. So you can see when I can adjust the size and I can also change where the vignette is centered. So at the moment, I think it's a bit too high and I really want it more around the center of the image. So maybe just a little bit further down. 
and that will tend to hold the viewer's attention into the foreground and away from the edges of the image. Now let's just feather that up again and now let's reduce the effect of the darkening on the edges. There you can see that we've now got a subtle vignette created using the Big Soft Ed that we've just made quite unique to fit this image. So you can see there with it off and you can see with it back on. And now it looks much more like we have a finished image that's been shot at sunset with some nice colour and intensity in it. And so this is now more or less a finished image just using four of the filters that I use all the time. You, there's, I mean, there's lots of filters in here, but you don't need to use all of them. Let's compare it to the original. So there's the original with the preview off. If I turn it back on, you can see that all the adjustments are subtle. They are applied in a way that kept them quite natural, but we've created an overall intensity of the image of the adjustments. Now, supposing you think that that overall adjustment is too harsh, there's too much going on. What you can do is use this overall opacity filter here just to reduce that overall effect of everything and pulling it back to around 85 seems to create a really natural look that's still quite colourful, vibrant and attractive. So a good landscape image. I hope you found that useful. I'm Robin Wally. I'll see you soon for another video. Thank you.